Welcome to the Red, White, and You podcast brought to you by Bang Solar, a brand new partner of Allen Americans Hockey and the great group who is redesigning and reconfiguring the uh, Allen Americans locker room, The in particular the uh, lounge where the players hang out in the mornings and uh, in the afternoons uh, uh, after practice. So our guest today is a guy who's related to the hockey world. It's Leon Frederick. He's with uh, Frisco ISD in Wakeland, uh, of course, one of the great schools over in Frisco, and uh, they've been a longtime partner as far as helping us with the intern program. Year number seven, Leon, uh, and we've had some great ones that have come upon uh, or come uh, along and joined the group over here in Allen. So a big thank you to Frisco ISD and yourself for for helping to uh, take care of us. It's been a, it's been a great seven years, Tommy. Frisco's done a lot to make sure that students get exposed to a lot of different things as they prepare to get into college and careers and the sports management aspect was, was started when the Cowboys talked about coming here. And now yeah. with the growth of the stars and the rough riders and the legends and the Cowboys and FC Dallas and all the other programs, including yours, it's allowed us to really expand and give the kids the opportunity to grow and see if this is something that they want to do for their career and in college. Yeah. It, it, you know, we've had some great ones. Um, you know, Ryan Schroeder, who was uh, a student yep. of yours just a few years ago and has become a very, very important part of our group here. He helps in all areas, you know, on the broadcasting side, the technical side, you know, in, in graphic design work or whatever we need him to do. He's, he's also involved in the, the corporate partnerships and in helping to make sure fulfillment is taken care of. So, Ryan's been a really big part of, of the new group of Allen Americans uh, staff members here, and uh, we, we can't thank you enough. Uh, as I tell people coming in, interns, uh, you, you got to live up to the uh, to the reputation of Schroeder, and that's uh, never say no, <laughs> and always yeah, exactly always right. be always be willing to go the extra mile. And 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 I say it, and I mean it. He's the best intern I've ever had uh, in my 12 years here, um, and very thankful for him. And uh, we've got a good group here as well this year with uh, Noah and Jimmy. Absolutely. I mean, it's one of those situations where we try to get the student to the right place where they can do the best work that they can do. But we also tell them, hey, you're really going to have to advocate and ask for more and never say no, like you just said. And, and we're lucky that in Frisco, the students are at a higher level and want to perform because they know what having an internship prior to going to college can do for them. Mm -hmm. And the district's done a great job in building relationships locally and in the area as well. It's awesome. I know we, uh, we get the evaluation sheet, uh, yep. you know, every uh, month or so or whenever, uh, you know, you need that uh, filled out. And, and, you know, I always have nothing but great things to say about the kids because they really do an awesome job. They want to be here. Uh, they're willing to dig in and help out uh, wherever needed. Uh, and that's all you can ask for. So, uh, again, thank you to Frisco ISD, uh, one of the great uh, school districts that's been a part of our internship program. But I want to talk some hockey with you, too, sure. because uh, first and foremost, Leon is a hockey fan. He's a, he's a lover of the game. And you got involved in, in the game of hockey very young in your, uh, your career, right? Grew up in Philadelphia, got to watch him win the cup. Now I'm dating myself in terms of my age. What but year would that have been? Well, year uh, sometime in the seventies, I think seventy-five. Because if it's seventy-five, it was a heartbreaking loss uh, for my Buffalo Sabers. That went six games. It was a great series, of course. Uh, you know the uh, the bat knocked down in the arena by Jim Lorenz. People might remember that, and of course the infamous fog game at okay. uh, the old odd back in the day. Do you remember that? Yeah, it's it's kind of funny. Wherever I go, something happens with Buffalo. So uh, yeah, and Dallas too. But uh, yeah. yeah, the fog game, and it was Friday when Freddie the Fog Shiro being the coach and knocking the bat down in the odd. I mean, that was uh, that was fun. I mean, as a kid, you're like, wow, does this always happen? But it doesn't. But uh, fortunate to grow up in Philadelphia around some fun hockey. Actually, did a, a high school internship with the Flyers and got my feet wet in the industry just to see what it was like. And that turned my love of the game into a little bit more. And a couple of years down the line from there, got hired. And back in the days when you didn't have a college degree and you could actually go work in an office and, and learn and spend a bunch of years with the Flyers, uh, jumped in and did an internship at the NHL. And then that led to working with uh, Ken Hitchcock again, who was an assistant coach with the Flyers at the time and got to go to Dallas in 1997 when the general manager, assistant general manager, Doug Armstrong and Bob Ganey, who was their GM, called and said, hey, can you get to Dallas and help us out? 
So you were with Dallas uh, during the, you know, the, the prime years of, of their, their, you know, time here in Dallas, obviously, you know, those were all playoff years. You had Madonna who was there at the time and, you know, Neuendijk and Morrow and some, some really good players that were a part of the, the organization during your time. Uh, and then now uh, Leon is still involved with hockey as he is one of our off ice officials and going to be a challenging year this year, Leon with, with COVID and everything. Uh, you know, how's that going to change your, your, your nightly job here at Allen? I, I think sitting on the uh, ECHL COVID off-ice official call on the Allen, the call that we had a couple weeks ago, um, understanding the complexities involved with, you know, limited arena attendance and how you have to enter and exit an arena and how you have to maintain distancing and if you're around players, what you have to do. Um, still can do our jobs. It's just going to be a little bit tweaked. But, I mean, being a teacher and having to deal with COVID protocol daily, here at school, uh, it's a it's a smooth transition. It's just that maybe our locations won't be the same in the arena. Um, our responsibilities might change a little bit to make sure things can get done. But I, I think it's the, the way everybody's prepared for it from, from the ECHL of the team. It, it's going to be pretty smooth. I don't anticipate any problems. Maybe we're a little bit higher up in the arena and we don't get our awesome center ice 12-roll <laughs> off seats to do the uh, off-ice official scoring. But that's okay. Well, and, and you know what? Um you guys have been great. Uh, and I travel around the league, uh, you know, there's some good ones, but none better than what we have here in Allen. Uh, Suzanne, who's been our head off ice official now for the last several years, uh, have so much respect for her, her knowledge of the game. Uh, you know, not just here in Allen, she works uh, a lot of different uh, men's league games and uh, different tournaments that come to town and, uh, you know, worked with her back at the Texas tornado uh, in the North American league back in the day. So, uh, I feel, feel very comfortable with her at the, uh, at the, the controls here and, uh, and our unbelievable crew that we have here at Allen, which includes yourself. For fans who always ask me, and they say, what's the job of the off-ice officials? We see them walking around the building with their, with their blazer on, but uh, you know, give our fans an insight. What are some of your duties on game night? Well, for me, uh, most of the time, I'm, I'm the official scorer, along with several other gentlemen, and we make sure – we keep track of who's on the ice, who's off the ice, who's assisting, who's scoring the goals, what happened. So it's a, it's, it's back and forth flow. Some of the other positions, you're the goal judge. If, of course, there's a video replay, you're the goal judge and they come to you. But some of the people that are in the box, Suzanne's in the box handling the scoreboard, handling the broadcasting. You have your penalty box officials who are dealing with the players and making sure that they spend the correct amount of time in the box and don't go free when they don't need to as they would say from Slapshot. But uh, up in the box, up in the uh, press box, I mean, it's the uh, scoring computer that handles everything from plus minus and goal scoring and penalties, which is relayed to the ECHL website for your real-time scoring. So right. there's different positions. Everybody does a, a bunch of different things, but it all combines together for one group. This is the Red, White, and You podcast. Leon Frederick, uh, Frisco ISD. You can see the Wakeland shirt he's got on there, the little logo over there. You go, show it proud. Um, he's been great, uh, you know, to us, and, and we've mentioned involved with the team uh, for the last four years. But you do work for the league, so there's no bias. You can't come in here with your Allen pom poms in hand on nope. uh, on a game night, uh, you, you know. And you guys do a great job of that too. And I, you know, I think uh, fans have appreciated that. I have as well. Um, you guys make my job easy because. One of the things that the league always says, let's get it right the first time, make sure we got the goal score correct, the, the assist correct. It just makes uh, life easier if we get that uh, done on game night. And that's the one thing I'll, I'll uh, brag on you guys about is, you know, we, we've done a really good job of making sure that we, we do get it right before we uh, close it down for the evening. But, hey, fans depend on you guys. If they can't be here and they're watching that game online and they're going to the ECHL website and pulling up the box score – they want to see you score. They want to make sure that it's right. So uh, you guys are a big part of, of what we do on game nights if you can't be in the arena. Yeah, I mean, we help out, but it also helps with you since they're listening to you doing the broadcast. They want to yeah. see what's going on. They're listening, and they probably have that live scoring going on, and as it goes through, it happens. So if it, if it works that way and it makes everything better for the person watching on uh, ECHL TV or listening to you, the combination works real well so you can pull your stats up. So it, it's fun. We mentioned Ryan Schroeder earlier, who was one of your school interns a few years ago, now works for the team. 
what is your goal? And when you send these kids over here, Leon, you know, first of all, what are you telling them uh, going into what they're going to be doing here with the team? And, and what, as a teacher, what are you hoping to accomplish or have accomplished for your kids? I think once this, the kids get to become seniors in the district, and the district has a two locations for the program, one at the Career and, uh, Career and Technology Center over in Frisco as well, but we want to get them prepped more as a professional preparation. We come in here and we spend several weeks in school creating LinkedIn profiles, talking about professionalism. How do we do presentations? Let's talk about your social media. Is it proper for the organization that you're going to work for? Are they going to be happy with it? Are you going to be able to communicate? How are your business skills? And as we go through it, it's a little early for them for it. Some of them, it's the first time they've ever dealt with an adult other than their parents or working at a fast food restaurant. Right. So it's a bit of a change. But what we want them to do is get out to the organization, to the company, and say, go out and have fun. Go out and learn. Don't say no, like you said before. Take yeah. on everything you can take on and see if this is what you like. And if it is perfect, move on. If it's not, that's perfect too, because now you understand that I thought I might be liked it now, not so much, but yeah. as we say to them, you don't necessarily need a sports management degree, get a degree that's transferable across the board for anything you would want to do because anything you want to do, you can do in sports. Absolutely. And, and again, uh, thank you to, you got two great kids, you know, over here this year with us. Uh, and Noah and Jimmy, uh, and they've been, they've been great. Uh, you know, I know you, you handpick and select these kids to come over here and be a part of the organization. And, and I know, I know, I know your love for hockey is a lot to do with that. You want to make sure you get the right people over here. And uh, again, thank you to you and Frisco ISD for all you've done over the years, providing us with, with great help in the office and, and hopefully giving them an opportunity much like Ryan Schroeder, that after they graduate, uh, possibly work your way into an organization like you did with the Flyers back in yeah. the day. It's a, it's exactly. I mean, it's a situation where the kids apply to get into the program and they come in and then we say, what are your interests? What are you interested in? Yeah. Because I want to make sure when a student goes to a location that it's not a babysitting job for you. Sure. I want to make sure that they'll be able to contribute as a valued member of the organization. And some people have different interests. Yeah. So somebody might be with the Dallas Sidekicks or with the Allen Americans or Exos or Michael Johnson or the YMCA or the Rough right. Riders. So it depends on the sports that they like. It depends what their interests are because we want to make sure it's the best experience they can get. And you guys at Allen have been great with our kids for the last several years. So I'm, they're all happy. I'm happy. You're happy. So we're good. Yeah. Well, Leon, it's been a challenging year. Uh, you know, it's been. Uh, everybody's had to, uh, you know, be safe and uh, make sure that we're, we're taking care of our people here and everyone's safe. So uh, thanks for all you do. And, uh, you know, Frisco ISD. And of course, thanks for uh, everyone tuning in to uh, watch this uh, Zoom cast, this podcast. Our, you know, weekly, we do uh, two personally here with the Red, White and You every uh, Sunday and every uh, Wednesday. And then, of course, are around the ECHL that we do on Tuesdays. This has been the Red, White, New Podcast. Tommy Daniels, thanks again to Leon Frederick of Frisco ISD for joining us and have a great week.